All right, hoods up on the truck. So what's going on? So uh, last time we did a video on the truck, we were chasing an oil leak, ended up with a fuel leak, still got an oil problem. Uh, Automatic Garage was fantastic uh, talking with me and uh, uh, I've been, I've known that I should get under there and pull that relief valve on the low pressure oil pump and check it and I haven't and then today it wouldn't start for me. So we're going to go ahead and do that and be done with that and see see where that leaves us. So let's get at it. Well, I got a part that was easier than uh, I've seen in other people's videos that came out. And so according to Automatic, since it didn't have any uh, tension on it, that it wasn't stuck. But anyway, I pulled it apart, lost some oil. I'm sort of looking at the, I guess it's just these three pieces, this spring and the piston. I do see a lot of scoring here. Can Let me see. You should be able to see that. So something has been rubbing against it. Look at that. I probably should just order a new, a new valve. I didn't, <clears throat> I got up there with my magnet. I don't know, half a dozen times, and I didn't pull anything of any significance out of there. Maybe a couple little fine pieces, but nothing as big as uh, I've seen others pull out of there. So I don't know if that was enough to cause a problem. Maybe it was in there, and I don't know. Maybe it could have, I don't know, if something can come out when the initial bit of oil drops out of there. tolerance is pretty tight anyway I'm gonna clean all this up grease it put it back together see where we're at probably order another relief valve and just put a nice shiny new new set in there Well, that concerns me that I've got some other problem. Um, almost everything in that motor is new. The low pressure pump's never been changed. But I don't know. We'll see. And we'll get them lubed up here. The spring sits and up in here. All right, we'll put it back together. All right, we're just going to try to crank it. It's troubling that, uh, I mean, I didn't see any conclusive. Well, the, the, you know, it was scored, so something was in there. I didn't, wasn't able to pull anything out, but hopefully with cleaning everything, uh, maybe we're in better shape. Let's see how it cranks. 
Might be some air in there, I suppose. I haven't taken the oil filter cap off, though. Let's see. Let's see how we do. Got up to 180, that was better than it was before. Let's see. All right, we're gonna try one more time and then I'm gonna hook up the laptop and see what's going on. Let's hook it up. Well, of course, I got it hooked up and fired it, and it took another minute and cranked again. I don't know if that's air or, or what I got going on, but all of this looked right except for the ICP pressure. Um, I guess I'm just going to order another valve. And we'll just move on from there. See how it does the next few days. That's all I can do. All right, so I just I let it sit for a couple minutes, and already it won't crank. So I'm gonna look at this again on here. See if I gain any clues. to one I think is good and IPR is low at the low side 14 to 85 ish I think all right let's see what happens here that took a long time Not sure what's going on. I, th I think I'll pull the oil filter cap off. Uh, somebody had mentioned something missing in there. I'm not. I need to look at that. Uh, we'll pull that oil filter cap off and look and see what's going on. If there's anything going on in there. Well, everything's looking nice up here. Used to be well wet with fuel. Everything's dry as can be up here. That's good. So this should be soaking wet with oil, right? Because it was just running. Interesting that it wasn't snapped into place. How would that be? This is a Ford filter and a Ford cap. Hmm. This never happened. It is full of oil for sure. That's weird.
kind of snapped in back in there. Let me look inside. Oh, what's going on with you? Well, it's dry. Should it be that dry? Is this supposed to stay full? I don't know. Somebody said something was missing. Hmm. I should probably go look at some videos. Is there something wrong with the relief valve? or I mean, with this drain valve, I guess it's called. I don't know. Drain valve. Is it supposed to be open like that? And drain immediately? That doesn't seem right. Because then it would have to, does it have to fill this bowl up every time? <sighs> Not sure. Now I said it was all nice and pretty, and now I got oil all over everything. So. All right, let me do a little research. Cover this while I research. All right. Wow, all you mechanics or, or even DIY guys that know this stuff must be getting a chuckle out of me because this thing, I'm missing all of this. The spring, this top part, and this plunger, all of it's gone so how does that work do you just accidentally pull that out with a filter or something i'm guessing that's how it happened because i'm guessing you just pulled the filter i pulled a filter off and all this came out with it is my guess my hope all right anyway we're going to go replace this and see if this helps the situation or not because i don't i don't know what effect i don't know what effect not having that spring on because when I pulled that cap off, you know, the filter was just sitting there not snapped in to the lit top, which means I wonder if it was even pushing down on that valve. Anyway, we're going to find out. I hope you don't ever watch this channel um, thinking I'm a mechanic because this is just something I like to do. And, man, I'm just winging it like everybody else. Thanks for watching, by the way. All right, I know you can't see down see down in there, but there's some good videos out there to show you exactly what's going on down here. And there's two there's two screws that are holding down uh, the uh, hmm, can't remember what all these things are called. So there's two valves down there. One is the drain valve. One is an anti drain valve. I don't know. I'm probably not calling them properly. But anyway, the two screws that are holding down the, the metal valve, they say to loosen that. Loosen those two. Don't take them out. It's a T27. So I'm just going to loosen those two. They, ha they have a uh, they sort of clamp onto the bottom of this plastic tube. I've never done this, so I know you're shocked. And then this is the one that actually holds the, the tube down. God, I can't believe all this stuff is missing, and I'm just looking at it like, huh, what's going on? So anyway. So this one screws comes all the way out. to get my magnet to grab that. Yeah, let me get my magnet to pull it out of there. Not quite loose enough. I really need to just lay down on this motor. I get one of those uh, those creepers that li allow you to lay down over the top. That would be nice. Uh, almost. This 
So I hope you guys know that if this is going to help me or not, I'm going to find out and be shocked. And some of you are sitting out there going, he's going to be so happy or he's going to be so sad. We'll find out. And then clockwise. There she goes. The old one. Yeah, let's see. I guess I gotta get that gasket out of there. How do you go about that? I guess what a pick. I guess there is some danger in dropping. You wouldn't want to drop things down the tube there, but. This gasket is bigger than, than the tube. There goes my garage door. All right, almost got it out of here. Hopefully it doesn't come out in pieces. Okay. See the old gasket. So the new kit comes with a one, the screw, the one screw, and a new gasket that I lubricated. It just sits in a sits in a ridge down here. So I can try to show you in there. It sits in that ridge down there, and there's spot for three screws. You can see that half circle at the top. That's where the screw that I removed came out to the top and to the left. And then the two screws holding the metal valve makes kind of a triangle there. All right. Okay, let me make sure I get that into the ridge. Yep, that sits right in there. It's no problem. Okay, that's that. And here's the new tube. And turn clockwise. Alright, so I got that. Looks like everything's lined up. I'm gonna try to get the new screw started. Alright, it wasn't too bad. Now I didn't I noticed on one of the videos that there was you can run a test to make sure that that um, drain valve holds when the filter's in there. I'm not gonna do that yet. I am going to hope this just makes things happier. Just, it's funny when you think about it because I'm doing this. And as I say, if there's any of you guys that know more than me, which you probably do, you probably know if this is destined for disaster or, or joy. So I'll find out. You guys probably grew up working on vehicles all your whole life. I didn't really. It's funny, my dad, he was never into it. So I didn't learn much from him. I mean, he he did show me how to change oil and such. So I did that, but I didn't really learn anything about motors until the Air Force. And I was in the Air Force and uh, had a friend in there. Maybe he'll see this video. 
helped me rebuild a Jeep motor, the old 304, I think it was, in the CJ5. And that was my first experience with that. I was 20, 20 years old. And that just got me, sent me down the road of not really, I mean, I've never done any, any mechanic in full time, but I try to do as much as I can on my own. I'm not afraid to take on anything, as you've seen in these videos. I just don't know a lot about what I'm doing, but I can look at a manual and look at videos as much as the next guy. These don't have to be tight. I saw the specs were not a lot of inch pounds. I'm just not going to over torque this. I just, I don't think that this needs to be super tight. Two of these are going into metal, which is good, I guess. And then the one is just holding down the plastic, so I don't want to get crazy on that. All right. All right. So now, I'll put the filter back in. Hmm. I wonder if I should hold that valve down and make sure she fills up quickly. All right, let's put the filter back in here and see how she does. Wow, there's the spring that I didn't have before. She takes, wipe her all down. It makes it look nicer, but also if you have a leak, it's easier to find something. So, all right, so it's dry as a bone in there now. Let's see what happens. Well, that was a lot more convincing. Could that be it? All right, uh, let's see. That start, that was the best start I've had in weeks, months, maybe. So it seems like I had a few problems going on. Uh, is this it? Guys, guys gals, uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna start four scan again. I've let it sit for a few minutes now. I want to see if it'll just crank right up this time. But I'm going to get Forescan going so I can look at it. This tool is really nice, guys. I, if you got a Ford and you don't have it, you may as well just get it. Because uh, this <coughs> ODB Link EX was like 70 bucks, And I think it was like $12 for the year to get the full setup, full uh, license on this. And man, it is really nice. And I haven't even... Really touch the touch the touch the tip of the iceberg. Oh, I need to have the key on. Come on, come on, man. All right, and then go live. Okay, ICP voltage 0.21, IPR at 14. If I can sync no, let's see what happens. Man, wow. So you, I'm sure, I'm sure you professionals understand, I'm trying to understand what, how not having that spring and that top plunger, well it must, not having that, there was a gap of space in there and so the filter was hanging onto the bottom of the oil filter cap and then I guess it just vibrated loose. Was it ever must was it ever pushing down the the valves pushing down in the right places? I'm not sure. Thinking out loud. This is positive though. 
So I'm going to see how it does and see if there's anything else we need to do. I'm going to let it sit for a little while while I clean up and try it again. All right, we're going to take it on a test drive. Which probably doesn't need a test drive since it was really just about starting, but I've got, uh, it's interesting, I've got the uh, scan going on the computer down here still but it collects some data while we drive take a look at that not really looking at anything in particular but good. I've had plenty of headaches with it, but boy, it is nice and strong with that, the SCT tuner on there. And the only things I've done to it, I put the SCT on there, the X4, I leave it in the performance uh, tune, except the couple times that I've towed with it, I put the tow tune on there. It just stays in performance. And then I did a uh, Exhaust. I did the four inch down pipe to five and then all the way to the back and then a six inch tip on it. I did leave mufflers on there. Uh, that's all about all I've done to it to soup it up. That tuner adds a lot of, I mean it adds horsepower. It says 120 horsepower if you buy all that. But then also, uh, you can tune the transmission to make the shifts firmer, and it just it really livens these things up. It just makes it such a better driving experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoyed my uh, insanity. Um, if nothing else, I hope you get a kick out of watching me fumble around. But we did investigate the low pressure relief valve. We, and then, of course, I found that I was missing parts on that standpipe. I don't know if that's the right term. It's like a return oil filter return tube, I think is what the parts place called it. Uh, seems to be good for now. Uh, upcoming, uh, I'm going to continue work, uh, trying to troubleshoot that Mo Bay sand. I ordered a, uh, a waveform generator didn't have that. So it's nice to have some electrical test gear at the house. I've never had it. I've been an engineer for a number of decades. I've always just kind of left it at, at, the, at work. Um, but if I can combine some of the stuff I know about that with my music, you know, work on my amps, work on my guitars, then all the better. But yeah, I hope you look forward to that. Uh, that Mo Bass is a great amp and I hope I can get it running again. Uh, I've done some research trying to figure out uh, what all the parts there are on the input in the input section and what all the chips are. A couple of them are a mystery because they don't have any markings on them. But we'll see what we find. So until, uh, until the next one, I hope you guys are blessed and uh, I'm back at the house and it keeps starting good for now. So you guys be blessed. See you next one.